Hey everyone, it's Aaron from Zero One Racing, and in this video I'm going to show you the basics of how to use Zero Chassis. So in some other videos we'll dive into more detail and into the different functions, but for now we're just going to stick to the basics. So the first thing you're going to do when you open the program is to load a setup in your first column. So now we're going to create a duplicate of this in the second column. Great, so now we have a setup loaded in the first column, which we're going to use as a reference, and we have a new setup which we can use to try out some changes on. So now let's go ahead and make a couple of example changes to our new setup. So let's change the fork height, and let's also change the triple clamp offset. Right, so now if we click the bike tab, we can clearly see the difference in geometry between the two setups. And also if we look over to our results area, we can see exactly how much the different values have changed. So here it shows us the differences between the two setups in brackets, which is great as it's often the change in these values which we're even more interested in than the actual values themselves. The results are also color mapped to give a really fast reference as to how significantly the values have changed. So the darker the green background, the greater the change is. Basically, this system is designed to help draw your attention to things that have been affected, but of course to properly analyze and compare, we need to look at the numbers. Right, okay, so by default, the bike is viewed in the extended position. This means with front and rear suspension fully extended at zero millimeters of travel. So we can change the position of the bikes by selecting a different bike position button. And these include the 1G position, acceleration, braking, and mid corner. So now let's take a look at our suspension graph. Currently we have wheel force and wheel rate showing for both the front and the rear of the bike. And if you're ever unsure of what a particular curve is showing, just hover the cursor over it and it will tell you what it is and also which y-axis it relates to. Okay, so to make it easier to analyze the front of the bike, let's go ahead and turn off the rear. Right, so now we just have the front wheel force curve and the front wheel rate curve. So when we talk about wheel travel, wheel force and wheel rate in the program, these are the suspension values vertically at the wheels. Although, because they don't take into account the properties of the tires, you might find it easier to think of these values acting at the wheel axles instead. So, one reason for looking at these values is because this is what the rider feels. For example, the rider doesn't feel the rear shock stiffness, but instead they feel the resulting stiffness at the rear wheel. So we do still have the option of viewing the fork and the shock curves on the graph, and the easiest way to do this is if you go up here to the Quick Graphs menu, and this lists lots of preset combinations of things that you can view on the graph. So if you wanted to view the fork force, we just select this. So the option at the top, wheel force and rate for the front and rear of the bike, is the default setting that we started with. But for now, we're just gonna select the option below it because we're just interested in the front. Right, so now let's try a change to our suspension by increasing our fork spring rate to 10 newtons per millimeter. So on the graph, we can easily see the change that this has made. And if we put the bike in a different position, so let's choose the corner position, the markers show us exactly where we are on the graph in this current position. So let's try making some further changes and you'll be able to see how the markers move left or right on the graph to show us how the amount of travel that we're using in this current position is changing. Okay, so if we decide we want to keep our new setup, we have to save it. Because it's a duplicate setup, it will ask us to rename it during the saving process. So simply fill out the naming boxes as necessary, and then press OK to save it. Okay, so that's it for this video. Like I said, it was just a super quick overview of the basics to help you get started. But in other videos, we'll look at some of the different functions, customizability, and everything else, because so far we've only just scratched the surface. So I hope this has helped you out. See you soon.